Uh, very excited to have Carlos here talking about his research. Carlos has been here uh, for the last year at Oxford Brookes University as a visiting research fellow at the Center for Environment and Society. Um, he is, it's been wonderful to have him here, another person who is interested in aging and care uh, and comes from background in anthropology. Um, so he has a doctorate in anthropology and communication from uh, Rovira y uh, Virgili University uh, in Spain, um, where he is also uh, now a, a professor and a researcher uh, and a member of the uh, Medical Anthropology Research Center. Um, so uh, his work is fascinating. It's been wonderful to have him here, as I say. Um, and uh, I'm I'm going to turn it over to him to talk directly about uh, his research at this time. So welcome, Carlos. And thank you. you. Thank you, Jason. Thank you, Yonha. Uh, and thank you, uh, everybody, for um, for attend. Um, for the invitation. Um, and first of all, it's important to say, uh, I don't speak very well English, so um, my apology is in advance. So, uh, and for this reason, I've decided uh, to read my presentation, but uh, maybe I have um, a few uh, grammar mistakes too. So I'm sorry for that. Um, Okay, so I start. Um, next slide, please. Good morning. Uh, today I will share my research on daily care experiences in three villages in the province of Castellón in the Spanish Mediterranean. Um, this is an area which, due to its geographic characteristics, daily life lies between mountains and sea. It is characterized as in other areas of the Mediterranean by the cultivation of olive trees, oranges, and vegetables. Over time, these areas have changed and become more heterogeneous. They have changed uh, mainly due to the impact of real estate construction, tourism, and industry. But it still retains this close relationship with the countryside, agriculture, and the sea. Um, this research focuses on five cases. Uh, there are older color husbands who take care of their illnesses or disabled wives. They are dealing with disabilities caused by strokes or degener degenerative diseases, such as Alzheimer's disease. The aim of studying older men was to investigate the relationship between the dimension of gender, kinship, and aging. But in particular, I wanted uh, to explore the daily coexistence of care, its transformations and vulner vulnerabilities in an older couple living alone. My ethnography consisted uh, on mapping these uh, people's daily care for one year in 2018 to learn about the routines at home, in the village, and with care institutions. I started uh, with the idea that care was a relational and process dimension, and therefore an activity that, in, that, crea that is created day by day in a kind of construction shared by, by at least two people. I would like to clarify uh, that we are not talking about cases where the, was, where the wife was uh, bedridden. These are cases where the women have not lost their mobility completely. They have interacted with the community. They have attended uh, day centers. So, so sorry, uh, there are cases where although mobility and memory have been affected, they have been people who have interacted soci socially. Next slide. Um, this study is part of national research series uh, by the Department of Anthropology at Rovira Virgili University in Tarragona, Spain. 
that has been carried out since 2015, which explores uh, care from a more holistic, uh, more holistic and social perspective. Not only unpaid care is explored, but also paid care, the relationship with migration, home care, and primary care. Next slide, please. Therefore, my study shares the research group's philosophy of seeking equal social care. We know uh, that care still lies with women. We also know that care is an indispensable element of society, but it continues to be politically invisible with insufficient social policies. And we uh, and what we seek as a research group is not only to explore care academically, but also to but also to contribute to paradigm shift from a more involved position. For this reason, and as a consequence of COVID-19, we have also started a platform for political initiatives involving different civil, civil society representatives. Next slide. I would like um, to give a, a brief overview of a Spanish context. Um, aging in Spain is an important social and political issue. Spain is one of the most aging countries uh, and is projected to be one of the most aging countries in the world by uh, 2050. As we know, these changes correspond to a series of reasons among which the increase in life expectancy and the low birth rate stand out. This has resulted in a care crisis that, it, that is increasingly impacting on the family due, due to a lack of care policies. Combined with the economic crisis of 2008 and the recent pandemic, it seems that little will be done regarding the policy. On the other hand, the Spanish culture model of care is, famil is familist. This means the family must provide long-term care from home. In other words, there is a still a morality of care based on family obligation, a moral obligation that lies more on women. But in recent years, there have been certain change and transgressions. When it comes uh, to caring for older people, for the older older persons, some daughters have decided not to take responsibility for their care. However, they have hired other migrant women reproducing a change of care and its stratification. That the gender issue does not seem to change. The fact that the younger generations are unable or unwilling to, to, to care has also generated a change in the intergenerational contract that has guided Spanish society for many years. Moreover, as in the cases in this study, parents do not demand that their adult children get involved in day-to-day -day care. Thus, intergenerational change are not only coming from the young, younger generations, but also from the older generations. Finally, the home is understood as the natural place of care. Little has changed in this respect. The aim, is, the aim is to care for older people at home until the end of their lives. Care homes are still culturally built under the antagonistic good care image. Many homes are transformed and medicalized in order to extend the stay of the care for person. But despite that, uh, but, sorry, but despite the change in material culture, the home continues to provide the sense of belonging, of belonging and identity that the carer considers indispensable in care. Um, the question here is how can care be provided at home and in the family for, for an aging and growing population? 
with change in the young in the younger generations talking, uh, taking responsibilities for care, it seems that couple care in aging will be a key element. Um, there are three main topics that I would like to share with, with you today. Um, they can be categorized into encounters and misencounters in daily, in daily care, the role of villages in care, and the constellations of family care. Next slide. Um, this first topic deals with the interactions of care in situ. The treatment uh, of bodies, the experience of states, the interpretations of illness, the work in the home in terms of cleaning or cooking, and the intimate care. On the one hand, it allowed me to learn more about how people's ethic of care is created. The interpretations that a husband Carter might, ha might have of his wife's independence and autonomy. For example, how they encourage their wife to walk alone, limiting the use of the walker. Juan, for example, wanted uh, his wife to walk a few meters alone without support, but he was always behind her watching for any fall. Juan told me that his wife should not forget to walk because it was important to feel like a person, that is, as a political subject. These are care activities uh, that have coexisted with carelessness, promoting the independence and autonomy of a vulnerable person can at the same time become a situation of carelessness. But what is carelessness in these circumstances and how can it be, uh, how can it be categorized? Care and carelessness seem part of the same thing in a daily activity that must be calibrated daily. Once Miguel was promoting the same independence when his wife fell with a crystal glass in her hand. She could and broke her arm and leg in the fall. From the fall, from that fall, his wife not only became afraid to walk alone, but reduced her mobility, which, which led to more fragility and emotional change, changes, sorry, because of the fractures. Recreating identity is another task that, that husbands undertake in care encounters. Even if a wife has dementia and forgets such important events uh, as the date of marriage or who her daughter is, Carers have always sought to recreate her identity. The identity is not lost to them. The Carter's narrative continue to create rich events of a person as a wife and mother, also fostering family cohesion, belonging, and commitment to care. As Vicente told me, even though his wife has forgotten who she is because of Alzheimer's, her family still knows who she is through a material culture of the home that restores identity and remind husbands of their caring responsibilities. In these encounters, the husband carers learn how to cook and they learn about the importance of food taste. Many have never touched a kitchen in their life. They understood, they, sorry, they understand the importance of establishing routines in care and household tasks. The internalization of care routines is an exercise that is a long process of learning, of learning and making mistakes. They also learn to perform intimate care and deal with their wife's mood changes. They learn to shower their wife, change their nappies, and take them to the bathroom at midnight. And they learn to establish a routine with medicines and food. But in these daily interactions, uh, encounters are also misencounters. There are fights within the couple. There are insults 
And there is a lot of distress in a carer who is also vulnerable. Vicente, for example, had fights with, he, with his wife with Alzheimer's every time he bathed her. And Javier was constantly described by his wife as a bad husband. Care in all age and conjugal life is, is definitely created in a long process of mis misunderstandings that has been often interpreted as a consequence of the illness. But they also depend on how they have lived their couple's stories before the illness. In Javier's case, his life as a couple had been built on family conflict. The care situation only increased these daily conflicts. In these cases, the vulnerability of the car of the carer can le can lead to suicidal or homicidal thoughts, such as the one Javier told me about wanting to kill his his wife or himself. In general, it seems uh, that in daily uh, long term care, there are no encounters without misencounters, a vortex of elements intermingled from tension to the most absolute understanding of pain and affliction. There are new bodily readings and communications uh, through the body, especially in cases where speech has been lost. New bodily interdependencies are created between two vulnerable bodies. Older men are thus insert, inserted into a new world of care that they must reconstruct on a daily basis between kinship, morality, vulnerability, and aging. Next slide, please. Um, all the cases work, worked on in this study have had an intense relationship with their villages. The villages uh, have been an essential part of the care routines. So it can be said that care has extended beyond the household's boundaries, where doing kinship is made within a community with high levels of belonging. We are talking about villages where carers have lived all their life. Tony's butcher is not only a salesman, but a person who has known, who has known him since childhood. The same happens to the hairdresser who cuts his wife's hair, whom he considers a sister. And the same goes for the baker from whom he buys bread every morning. The villages are, are spreading like a swarm and are an essential part of long-term care and the integration of an older couple who don't who do not live alone and 24 hours at home. But social networks indeed change when the illness breaks, uh, sorry, breaks into a couple's life. Tony no longer sees his friends as, of, as often, but they still make time to see each other. In this sense, self-care and the village have an intris intrinsic relationship. For example, uh, what would Vicente be without the bar where he drinks coffee or beer with uh, one of his neighbors? Or Miguel who meets every Friday afternoon for lunch with his friends, all of them retired. Almost all husband carers use these moments of the day to, to strengthen or reactive their bonds, sometimes in the bar, sometimes shopping in the supermarket and chatting with the female workers, and sometimes shopping in the local shop and chatting with his neighbors. These activities are possible because their wife are in day centers, a fundamental space in long-term care. In such spaces, wife have therapies, interact with other people and experience professional care from the village's proximity, where they meet with other neighbors and even family members. They are not, they are not external 
and isolate institutions, but are part of community. But the care a Spanish Mediterranean village can provide is also characterized by its relationship with non-humans. Miguel's dog Manolete has been fundamental in his moment of deepest frustration. The same feeling was experienced by Tony when visiting his olive fields, or Juan when he watched the sunset from the corner of his street. A sun that, that hides between the mountains of his village. The visits to a small gardens or an, sorry, an orchards and the interaction with, an, with the nature have calmed the fragile colors. The natural environment, environment and animal interactions are important elements in long-term care, especially for a generation that has grown up in a rural environment. Collective care can manifest itself in multiple forms and be understood in multiple ways. I present here a type of collective care built over a long period of belonging and extended kinship among inhabitants who share a collective story based on the same space as the village. Next slide. Um, the notion of constellation of care is a metaphor with which I try to capture the, compl the complexity of long-term care. I take an idea from the star constellations that have guided the various populations in human history, uh, whether it's as a map for travelers or as a calendar for the harvest. But what I am interested in highlighting from the constellation is the dimension as a social representation. Uh, on the other hand, it's important to note the constellation are not static. They change over time, they move. In care, some social actors fade away and others appear on, on the scene, depending, de sorry, depending on, on the care story, such as a day center or even a care home when care becomes difficult. But the point that join the lines and shape a constellation are not, sim are not simple crossings. Taking Tenningold's idea of mesh work, the meeting points are not complex, not according to the inter interaction of care. Therefore, constellations are not a simple social network, but a mesh work created based on intense relational knots. The graphic I show you attempt to capture this constellation of care in one of the cases work on. I try to reflect the social actors involved and the spaces of care. Furthermore, I try to visualize how care moves from one side to other through the relationships. Care in movement and multi-situated. Care does passes between the couple, the children, the grandchildren, according to the demands and the spaces of care. It passes through the bar, it passes through the school, and it passes through the day center. One can understand that care is collectivized when considering a graphic like this. The responsibility goes through a husband career. But in the cases, sorry, but in the cases studied, sorry, but, but in the cases studied, uh, care has been ex extended between the family and the village. It should be clear that responsibilities are not the same between social actors, but it should be, uh, sorry, but it should also be clear that long-term care does not happen only between an older couple in the solitude of the home. This graphic demonstrates a moment of care, perhaps the most collective moment after six or seven years of care. But the initial care started very individualized, 
sorry, individualis individualized. Tony, for example, thought he could care for his wife alone. However, isolated care becomes unsustain unsustainable over time due to the emotional burden and responsibility it entails. When care starts to open up, the day center is one of the main actors forming these constellations. It is the one that changes the routines of care and self care. Uh, next slide. This second graphic uh, on the left hand is uh, of the first lockdown during the COVID-19 in Spain. The, complex, the complexity of measure disappears completely. And it is a time when care is re familiar, re -familiar, sorry, re is re familiarized at home. It is not the husband carers who motivate it, but first health policies. Uh, the next graphic on the right hand is after the, lock, uh, after the lockdown. The, the, uh, the constellation change. The difference with the previous one is that care home enters uh, the scene due to the deterioration of Vicente's wife's, Vicente's wife's health. Not going to the day center and harmed her physically. She has stopped uh, walking and put on weight. In addition, her mental health deteriorated due to the Alzheimer's and she became more violent. This situation makes something clear. The care organization must be shared uh, better if it is based on proximity. Before finishing, I would like to highlight the ethnographic value of long-term care studies as a tool that allow us to appreciate the complexity, the complexity of care and the difficulties that carers experience daily. In addition, tracing care trajectories allow us to explore how, policy, how public policies impact daily care and how they reinforce specific culture patterns such as familiarization. I don't, I didn't, I did, I did not want to focus on gender or kinship transformations that occur in husband carers in this presentation nor on the phenomenological value of care. I'm so sorry for that. I can only mention the retirement, fragility, pain, self-perception of the body, and daily care tire influence masculinity models. On the contrary, I have sought uh, to give you an overview of how dynamic and paid care is during all age and illness the role of the village and the importance of proximity and belonging in the Spanish Mediterranean context. Um, thank you very much. Um, so sorry for my very strong, uh, very strong Spanish accent. So I'm so sorry for that. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, Carlos. That was fantastic, actually. Thank you, Jason. Yeah. It covered so much and and uh, it's really fascinating uh, and those are really powerful um, visualizations uh, of the care constellations at the end um, yeah. that were uh, you know I have so many uh, <laughs> thoughts about um, but um, at this time uh, I'm happy to open it up to uh, anyone that's here uh, if you want to uh, turn on your uh, video again. If you want to use the raise hand function, you can do that. Um, we're a small group, so I think we can manage that all right. Uh, if for some reason you're having a little trouble with your uh, microphone or something like that, you can also uh, put your question or comment uh, there in the chat, um, and we will be monitoring that as well. Would anyone like to begin with a question or a comment for Carlos? Uh, 
Uh, okay, good. I was just about to jump in, but then Ben beat me. So Ben, go ahead. Hi, thanks very much, Carlos. I found that was absolutely um, fascinating. And I really like the way that you're looking at, um, as you said at the end, that the importance of kind of proximity and um, belonging. Mm. Um, is that something that's uh, come, it, it is a kind of new strand in your work or is there a, a wider literature around that in relation to care and care relationships? Mm. Yeah. Um, first of all, I, when I start, uh, when I started my, my research in, um, in the villages, I've never um, questioned about that, uh, about that. Um, because um, I I haven't con complete um, I haven't seen in my in, in my design research so, but when I mapping um, the care uh, the care routine of of these couples, I I can visualize this. Um, this close relationship with the villages um, and these feelings of belonging. Um, and for me, uh, this kind of feeling uh, was uh, very important because, um, for example, for the husband carers, um, uh, it was uh, like a, I don't know, say that I, I, like a, um, I belong in, in to this village, to the village. Is my 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 situation is not, it's not myself situation. Is a, a collectivized situation because I, for example, um, Tony is. is Yes, yes, different. Um, Tony uh, is a very, very uh, pragmatic uh, case because he, um, he uh, the bonds that he, uh, he created was very, very close in her in her village, uh, but very small village. I don't know, remember that the, the, the number is one thousand of uh, inhabitants, for example. So. Um, I don't know, uh, but this is very important. Yes, the relationships, the relationships. But it's important to the, um, to develop the um, institutional care in these kind of villages too. It's not only the the field to to uh, belong in. Is it's, it's it's more important to develop uh, institution of care. In, in this kind of a, a space. Great, yeah, th thank you. It, the reason I asked is because we're developing a research proposal which is looking at um, support networks um, in the in the UK, and and I think possibly the the importance of of place and what what it brings hasn't hasn't been. Um, recognized as, as strong as it, it it might have been so yeah really inspired by by what you're saying saying today thank, thank you man. thank you yeah you two should definitely stay in touch on that um i think there'll be a lot of interesting stuff there uh i see a hand from joy joy would you like to unmute and ask your question yeah sorry i'm just trying to get my face as well um, there we go. <clears throat> Sorry about the light, bright light behind me. Hi, Carlos. I'm uh, really interested in um, what would happen, what happens to people who haven't lived in the community for all their lives. So supposing people move into a community, how long does it take for them to be accepted? And as they grow old there, will the community also embrace their needs as well as the people who've lived there all their lives? Yeah. I don't know. I don't know, Joy. But I think it's important. For example, uh, in cities, it's important to develop this kind of care in, in your neighbor, 
in the neighborhood. Yes, it's it's like that. These kind of villages. So you need to how do you say that uh, to to make uh, a mesh work. It's important because uh, it's very important. I think, especially for all 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 people, older people. Yes, it's very important because the um, this this kind of isolated uh, be, you, when you live, for example, when you live in a village, you you live in a house, you know. But when you live in uh, in the city, you live in Spain, you live uh, in a building. So it's it is very different because when you live in the house, you it's very easy to go to the street. But when you live in a building, it's um, it's very difficult because you you have to go to the to the lift uh, down and then uh, go to the street. So um, the space is very reduced too. Uh, the idea of home is another another kind of uh, of idea. So um, I think um, in general it's important to to make to make uh, bonds with your neighborhood or with your village and create new histories, <coughs> new stories, right, right. new stories about, I don't know, about your reality, your new <laughs> reality. Well, you know, as you know, I have a personal interest in this because I spend a lot of time in <laughs> Catalonia <Yeah. clears> where I'm desperately studying Catalan so that if I grow old there, <laughs> <laughs> people like me to speak Catalan. So, you know, the better I settle in. That's just it's a personal inquiry, but also observing people in Scotland where I am at the yeah. moment. <clears throat> that I know a lot of people who've been in this little town, it's 7,000 people, yeah. all their lives, and they all know each other from when they're small. And as they're getting older, and a lot of them you know, are getting older and dying, <clears throat> they all know about each other and look after each other. But I'm not sure to what extent they extend that welcome to people. I don't know, really. I'm just wondering. And this is Scotland. I can probably talk to you about it in the future. But yeah. Um, it's an interesting, you know, how long does it take somebody to become part of that, that care community, <clears throat> really? Yeah. Anyway, thank you. I think you've, you've given No, me thank you, Joe. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <clears throat> yeah, thank you. That is really interesting. I was wondering about that as well. And, uh, and what you said about... Um, you know, uh, the need for institutions as well, uh, and to have them as being part of this, uh, this network of this constellation, I thought was important. And I, I could imagine you could use this kind of um, way of diagramming the network, uh, thinking about the network, uh, and, and all of those stories that exist along those different lines that you made, um, as a way uh, to re-envision um, where uh, where uh, um, institutions could could fit, perhaps, right? If you wanted to rethink and make them more <clears throat> integrated, and we're all talking about integrated care and all of this integrated community care. It's a big discussion here at the moment, mm -hmm. um, but we're all trying to figure out what does that mean. Uh, I I think that visual. Um, uh, uh, kind of clue could could really be perhaps helpful, and we could think about okay, well, where do we want to draw the lines? Where do we want all these connections to coalesce? Um, I think that might be uh, very interesting. In your, uh, I know you you showed that after COVID, you know, in that one case, um, the woman who was being cared for was moved to a care home. Mm -hmm. Does that feel very much like a? Um, you know, a, a, uh, a sort of last last resort uh, kind of maneuver, like it's a, you know, the things got had gotten significantly bad enough that the, she had to be moved there. Um, are, are care homes still thought of as places that you want to avoid at all costs, uh, uh, and only when they need very a lot of care? Yeah. Uh... Yeah, that, that yes. Um, I have problem with uh, when when I try to explain the the paper and uh, the, yes the role of the care homes, 
because um, I um, I haven't explored a lot this uh, this role, but uh, but in this case uh, the care home is very near to the to the village, but is it's not it's not in all villages in Spain. Mm. Yes, because one one thing is um, when you have your um, this care home very 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 um, distance of the, your village because you uh, you um, like a older man you you have to take uh, your your car and drive to um, to care your wife in in care home so in this case it's very different it's it's so different so it's um. And it's very important because, like in your in your book, yeah, it, you 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 can note this the importance of the family in the care in the care home, the importance. Uh, yes, you uh, this this kind of of, of husband um, still care in this kind of of institution. So, um, but. You always have the bad paradigm of that care home is for die. Mm. So and it's so medicalized. Um, it's not my home. Uh, it's it's not my home like husband, not like like wife because the wife uh, has Alzheimer's. So it's not important. It's more important for the care. So. Um, so yes, I, I, I think so. Yes, it's, it's, I, I think about that, uh, Jason. Yes, 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 yes. But it's important that I think it's very important to to have clothed these kind of institutions in long-term care. But I know that it's impossible because our policies is 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 not contribute to that. So. Yeah, thank you. It's interesting, but you know, now we're starting to think about how how can we change these policies, maybe to have a little bit more interaction between community and family and care home and yes. paid and unpaid care, and you know, I think that hopefully uh, we'll sort of be moving in that more in, in that direction, in different places. Uh, the village model is very, very quite interesting. Yeah. Um, Youngha, I see you have a hand. Yeah. Oh, thank you very much, Carlos. It's really interesting, and then it's it's good to, you know, have this real case example. What how this care, is particularly in rural villages, is important. Yeah. Really, not only family care, but you know, community care is important. I was going to ask the same question Jason actually mm -hmm. asked, but you already told and uh, answered. So that village's case is lucky because the care home is near, you know, so that even though the wife ended up went to uh, go to ended up went, uh, go to the care home, still family can visit. Mm. So I think the rural village setting, particularly this community care is important because if there is no a care home in nearby, Anyway, somebody has to look after. So that is a community roles. So I've been interested in this, how you know, we provide the care for all the people in community level. I learned a lot from Japan case, yeah. and even also in UK, in England, mm -hmm. we are starting moving to one direction. We have to build community and the community has to provide care for people, particularly those who don't have a family or single and lonely. Mm. Somebody has to, you know, uh, care for it. And that is the community roles. And you may learn why you are staying here. England, the CARE Act changed it. So we are going to go to integrate mm. the service for community people. And then NHS and actually working with the developer and urban planning and also local authority, they are work together to provide the care facility within the community. So this is, I think, the, 
the step to forward. And I think Europe and Asia, particularly in Japan, already started this community care, the yeah. direction. So I think like you did today, you showed this, you know, case, uh, this case as an, uh, the, the case study is really important. We learned yes. you know, how people are struggled if we don't have any family care. Mm. So I don't have it particularly, you know, the, the question, but I think this is really important to study, to build on how we, you know, how we create more care you know, community care provision in particularly in rural village. Yeah, yeah, I'm really, I'm really uh, agree with you. Yes, um, I think it's important, but I think um, it depends of the context of the social context of uh, each country, because, for example, in Spain, uh, we have, uh, I don't know how it is in, in, in English, I try to, to translate with, in, in, is uh, we have a despopulation in the villages. So um, we have um, villages, but uh, all, um, in majority for older people. So this is a big problem. Yeah. This is a big problem because the policies don't go to, to this kind of people. And you need, um, you need always, you need um, the new generations. To, um, to integrate new kind of policies because, because it, it is, is, is that, is, is, is the reality. But um, this, these villages um, are very different because have um, economic activity. So it's very important to improve uh, in, in these cases, uh, these kind of institutions like uh, mm, day centers are very important. It, it's very, that's very important in long, in long, uh, long term care. It's, it's very important for only, not only for the carers, um, also for the, for, the, for the wives in, the, in, in my case, yeah. Thank you, thank you. Okay. Um, listen, if I add one more comment. <laughs> oh, you are muted, Jason. Okay. Um, I'm actually recently, I learned from one of the uh, seminar from Oxford and uh, the seminar invited the, you know, some the local authority officers, uh, BK, I, do you uh, are you aware of the Spanish the northern part of the Spanish BK BK um, they are actually doing you know innovative uh, you know evaluation about how different care, community care model so mm -hmm. the Spanish government has an, the fund from European fund so they actually you know, use the fund and then recreate the rural, the inside the rural village to provide this very, very different way of the community care. So yeah. I think they are starting doing good, very innovative way. So that uh, innovative case study can be spread to, you know, the other local village as well. So. Mm. Let's let's keep our eyes on, so there will be more good cases emerging, so <laughs> we can all learn together. Yes, yes, I hope. But yes, I know. I, oh, it's Biscay. It's called the Biscay, the Bay of Biscay. Yeah. <sighs> Yeah, uh, thanks, Young Ha. I, I just want to, I'll come in and just say that uh, Mary's put a, a little comment in the chat as well, mm -hmm. um, thinking about proximity, she said, um, uh, a, I imagine the, the construct of the care home staff, uh, or the, uh, the care home staff population will be very localized to the village as opposed to those uh, in the UK. Um, do you want to come in and say a little bit more about that, Mary? I just thought it was interesting about that 
that sort of sense of community and understanding and knowing people and and good care so you know in respect that our care homes people they don't build those relations in, relationships in them people don't know each other in them and it's more of a a transactional place as really a community i've seen that mm. Yeah, yeah, I get that. Um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, yeah, I think I think that those ties are really important. I don't know about in your in in the cases you're looking at, Carlos. If were the were the staff uh, at the care homes and stuff from from that area or from uh, villages or were they from all over? And you know, we have international mobility of care homes staff in this country and other countries is very common. I'm so sorry. I I don't understand the the the, the idea. Sorry. Can you refer? Right. Were the were the care home? Uh, I'm mm. not sure if this is what you meant, Mary. But um, were the staff of the care home and the daycare mm. um, were they also local? Mm. Yes. 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 Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. This is very important. Yes, because it's so, um they are um they are villages. Uh, yeah. Because uh, you need the, um, the villages um, and the workers are, are local. It's not the same la like like a city. It's very different in the city because you have a lot a lot of migrants. So um, these care of institutions um, hire this kind of persons. So because um, it's important, but but it's important to know. Uh, we have another kind, and very important, another kind of care in Spain, that is uh, the, the migrant care. And the migrant care is important in the village too. The migrant care is Equatorian, uh, Peruvian people like, uh, that works uh, like housekeepers, so, but migrant. So it's very important and it's another agent uh, to uh, to know in this constellation, in this uh, family's constellations, because it's very important, not only the institutional care. So it's in the, um, the, illegal, the illegal care. I don't know say that, but it's important too. It's very important too in daily care. Yeah, I remember that. Thank you so much. Um, we're about at the end. Are there any last questions uh, from anybody? No, if not, I think then we will just say thank you, Carlos, for a wonderful talk yeah, and thank discussion. You. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and um, yeah, it was great to learn about, about your work and look forward to learning more about it.